has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Aaron O running it with Moppy today from Pharrell Adele along the Jersey Show. It's Uncle Futrelli with your boy Carver High, legend. On C2C on a pain-free Friday on the 4th of Pharrell weekend. Hope everybody has a kick-ass holiday. And uh, I know Carver High, they're predicting savage weather here, at least tomorrow. We might see some sun on Sunday and fun day Monday, but uh, we're uh, preparing for the worst. Devastating rains, torrential downpours, bomb cyclones, high winds, trees down, power lines. The world is ending. Every time I watch the weather, it's never just, it's 92 and hot. It's, it's people are dying, suffocating, wind, damage, hail, cyclones, roads breaking in half, rocks tumbling down. Uh, I'm actually seeing now that maybe that stuff is going to move in for the overnight hours and actually be out of here uh, by the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, so there is some hope on the horizon. It did look like tomorrow, uh, at least in our area, was going to be a washout. But apparently uh, things are looking up in the weather department. And while you're sleeping tonight is when all of the heavy storms uh, will be bombarding the area. So that's the latest. Uh, what we give you weather on C to C. Mafia uh, said he well hopes that my mouth gets washed out with soap tonight in the overnight hours. He just said that yes. in my ear. Uh, very possible. He All said right, I'm let a me, naughty uh, boy. I'm so naughty. Yes, on a 4th of Pharrell weekend, no less. Let's roll through a bunch of these. The Nuggets uh, signed DeAndre Jordan and Bruce Brown, uh, a couple of former Nets off the scrap heap. Uh, for the Nuggets here, a two-year deal for Brown, $13 million. Knicks re-signed Mitchell Robinson, four years for 60 Knicks signed Isaiah Hartenstein, two years, $16 million dollar deal as well. Yes. Frankenstein. Uh, we got Frankenstein the on the team now. <laughs> the Heat re-signed Victor Oladipo, one year, $11 million. Uh, We'll see if he can parlay that into something bigger. Blazers give Anthony Simons four years and $100 million. Jeez. I mean, off of one year, we gave Anthony Simons one, four years and $100 million. The NBA is something else. It really is. Uh, Patty, Mills back to, <laughs> Patty Mills back to the Nets, two for 14 and a half. Nick Claxton back to the Nets, two for 20. Your boy Andre Drummond uh, got himself a new home, too, uh, Scotty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He goes Dude, to the Bulls. He's hard. Uh, Two-year deal for Drummond. He was he wasn't good uh, He's with, with the Nets. He was He's bad. Hard. I love Nick Claxton. He did not. And I, I gotta tell yes. you, it, it, this is all you're left with is Nick Claxton and Patty Mills and White Boy Joe. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, that's that's a tough scene right now. Uh, we'll see what they can get back for Durant and Kyrie. Uh, how about Dort? Getting the bag in OKC. Five years, $87 million for our boy Dort out there with the Thunder. The Bucks re-signed Bobby Portis. Uh, four for 49 Big eyes. for Bobby Portis. Big eye Bobby. What do you, what do you like eye. better? Which, which deal do you like better? Portis, four for 49, or P.J. Tucker, three for 33? Which one do you like better out of those two I guys? Like, oh, I like Portis better. He, he goes, he, okay. he, uh, he does everything on the D end, uh, and he's big. He can hit threes, and he runs the floor. He's all out hustle. And I know everyone on this show thinks they're so clever, all these fans that write me about uh, P.J. Tucker. I am telling you, if anyone knows old man legs, it's me, and he got him. The Bucks also added Joe Ingles, uh, Scotty, a little piece on the bench for the Milwaukee He's Bucks. another white boy you... with no legs. Shot. He blew out his knee, oh, right, or something. Shot. He shot, too. We uh, welcome in all of our radio affiliates. Pharrell Coast to Coast, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody with us as we head into the 4th of Pharrell weekend. The Mavericks signed Javal McGee. Three years, $20 million, another big down low for the Mavs. Uh, Magic re-signed Gary Harris, two for 26. 
The Cavs and Ricky Rubio reunited. A uh, three-year deal there. Spurs are going to waive Danilo Gallinari after get, uh, getting him in the Murray deal. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. Yes. Uh, apparently, he wants to go to Boston, Scotty, was what I saw today. Gallinari to the Celtics. Uh, little guy. Right, listen, my man, is a, he, he is a plant, right? He just stands yeah. on the winger in the That's corner, it. and he knocks down threes. You know, uh, people always tell me about how Tucker used to hit that corner pocket three, which he did, but in the end... In, in Milwaukee and in in Miami, he didn't hit it. I mean, he averaged two no. points in, in Milwaukee, okay? So that means you ain't hitting threes if you average two points a game. All right, so Danilo Gallinari shoots better than uh, P.J. Tucker when he's having sex with his wife. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. of Memphis, four to six months, fracture in the right foot. Uh, never fun. Stephen Curry is going to host the ESPYs. Uh, nobody will watch. And finally, Scott. I've never uh, watched that <laughs> once in my life. That never. cheesy wannabe. I can't do it. I can't like, do it. it's the worst rub off of the Academy Awards ever. I mean, honestly, I'd rather watch the Nickelodeon Awards than the ESPYs. I know everybody gets caught up in all that nonsense, but I can tell you, I've never watched it once in my life. Never going to happen. Jan. Giannis with the new Zoom Freak 4 uh, sneakers that you're excited about. What an ass-kissing festival that ESPYs is. An ass-kiss city. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game everybody. live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. Is the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. The Yankees are World Series favorites now. They did jump in front of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Yankees are plus 400. The Houston Astros are plus 600 for third choice. How do you feel, DRS, as we sit here on June 30th lining up the Yankees and the Astros? I feel good about it. I mean, you feel like two really good baseball teams going ahead to head. Sometimes you would have to say, I guess, Kevin, throw the records out the window. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Pharrell, coast to coast. Will that defense ever live up to the BS hype that they've received? My understanding was in the first half of the season, they were freelancing too much. They were not playing as a unit. Second half of the season, Jack Del Rio, the D coordinator, got things together. They played better. But you're right. They've not played anywhere near the hype of, the, of, of what they were supposed to be. This is, this is supposed to be defense, which was historic, but they were anything but that. They're not great in the secondary. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harlow with your Sports News Minute. Is gambling legislation slowing down? Well, Kansas and Maine are the only states that have approved and close to approving deals this year, 2022. Massachusetts, North Carolina, others still looking at it, but they haven't pulled the final trigger yet. As for Kansas, 80% of the revenue goes into a development fund that will be used to lure Pro sports franchises, the idea is to bring the Chiefs across the river into Kansas. But the expected revenue take for the state, about a million to five million dollars yearly, is not nearly enough. But it may be enough for a start, and it may be enough to give the Chiefs leverage as they continue to look at sites in Missouri. Bottom line is gambling, remote deals, all of the casino operations and the implementation is slowing down all of these issues. It's still 40 some odd states in the next three years. You can bet on it.
All right, Pharrell, back on uh, Coast to Coast on this uh, Friday as we uh, gear up for the holiday weekend. I wanted to tell you, uh, I know that uh, Carver High, I don't know if you saw that last night when uh, Castellanos hit that home run. And uh, the guy that caught the home run ball, he did have a beer mug uh, and, and his glove. He caught it in his glove. And then he held up the beer mug and celebrated it with the ball in his glove. And it said, at Sports Grid and at Sports Grid TV on his beer mug. I couldn't believe it because, you know, the timing of it after I called him a bum and then you got all that money with him hitting that home run, that bum, that uh, that guy would have that mug right then and there. It's special. It's like a special memory that will last forever in the, in the laurels of this show's history. It certainly will. Uh, that's for sure. And speaking of baseball, uh, we will now turn our attention to that. Uh, a couple games from last night and then a full slate uh, for you coming up here. Uh, we actually have, Scotty, believe it or not, a couple of afternoon games today. Uh, the Red Sox are at Wrigley to open a weekend series, the Businessman Special, uh, out there in Chicago today at the friendly confines, 4-3. to three. Red Sox lead the Cubs in the sixth. And, of course, it is Canada Day up in Toronto, Scotty. The Rays and the Blue Jays, uh, one nothing. Rays have the lead in the third inning. Always fun. Canada Day uh, up there. That is, you know, no prime minister today. It's Canada Day, baby. That's why you get coffee. Uh, holding down the updates. Uh, Got to celebrate in all the ways that we can. Big uh, day Dodgers in and the I love Pop Canada. Big day. Love Toronto. Love I, I love the Four Seasons. Uh, Dodgers and the Padres last night, start of a four game series. And it was a double shot of Justin Turner for you, Scotty. He had a solo home run early in the game, and then it was tied at one in the seventh, and Turner goes yard again on FS1. Turner in the air, center field, Grisham back at the wall, and Justin Turner has done it again, this time to give Los Angeles a 3-1 lead. Very impressive. Yeah, they, they're doing a good job there. Uh, they got the crowd, Mike, a lot louder than the announcer, which is always a good thing. Uh, let's hear from Dave Roberts uh, now, Scotty, talking about Turner, very proud. Uh, of his night, the so two home proud. runs to beat the Padres. So proud. It, it was a great night. Um, you know, we've said all along that Justin's a guy that, you know, in big moments, big spots, he knows how to drive and run. And uh, this was a big game, you know, and uh, he rose to the occasion like we've seen many times before. And tonight was his night. It was, uh, you know, the first home run, I think it was a cutter. And the second one, maybe a cutter or a slider. And that's as good a swing as I've seen him take this year, going to the big part of the field uh, late at night um, for a home run. So really, really good to see. Yeah, I went for it last night uh, with the Padres, and that didn't work out too well. Uh, I'm going back to uh, the other side of the river uh, tonight with the Dodgers. But uh, that's the first time we've had Dave Roberts on in a while. I know. We've been missing him, so I decided to go and find him this morning uh, and make sure that he gets involved uh, here on Coast to Coast. The Astros, Scotty, beat the Yankees last night in Houston. They played that one game. They'll meet again in a few weeks for a doubleheader down there at Minute Maid. Only one scoring play for the Astros, but it was enough. A two-run double for Alex Bregman on AT&T Sportsnet Southwest. Bregman drives one to left field, all the way back and off the wall. Two runs will score. Tucker to third, Bregman to second. Astros in front, two to nothing on the bases loaded double by Alex Bregman. That did not miss being a grand slam by much. No, he just clipped it a little bit too far out in front, created that low line drive, but enough to get off the wall and drive in a couple. Yeah, and again, I hit the uh, Astros over the Yankees. Uh, I bet on the Yankees uh, against everybody every night. And then when they play the Astros, uh, I bet on Verlander and I bet on Garcia. I bet on the Astros last night. I hit them again. So I've been hitting them left and right against the Yankees. Get ready. Uh, they're going to play two more soon. And then uh, you'll see them again. And then uh, we'll see them in the ALCS. Uh, here is Aaron Boone, Scotty, on what how he feels uh, the Yankees have played against the Astros. Of course, five games in the last week. Yankees lost three out of the five. Let's get Booney's thoughts. 
Could have lost good. all five. You know, they're 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 one of one of the best teams of keeping you from scoring as there is. So, um, you know, they've done a good job of, for the most part, holding us down. And, um, you know, that's going to happen sometimes against uh, against a good team. So we got to, you know, we'll we'll learn from all this and hopefully gain, um, you know, important. You know, information from facing their guys. Um, here we got to face all of their starters. Hopefully, we uh, we we make good use of of the experience we get from facing them. Like I didn't watch uh, last night, but uh, a, a couple of innings of it, I, I didn't see Jordan Alvarez after he had that collision. So they beat him without that guy in the lineup. And yes. let me tell you something, Carver. You know as well as I do. They could have lost all four games to them in the Bronx. They were lucky they got the walk-offs in game one and game four from Judge. Otherwise, they lose all four games and then lose the game in Houston. That'd be 0-5. They're, you know, 2-3 and 3 against them. So bottom line is, is the Astros uh, have found a way to beat the Yankees. No one else has. Look, and and like we've said for three months, uh, all this stuff, it's great the Yankees have played well. Uh, you love the way they've played against the Rays and against the Blue Jays and all that stuff. October's what's going to matter. Uh, that That's it. I mean, they got to beat these teams in October. Uh, whatever happens here is just nonsense at this point. So you're not uh, enjoying Yankees watching activate. them win every night? I'm enjoying, enjoying watching it. them win, but I'm not going to get hyped up and think that they're – because I still believe that we're going to see – what we saw the last few Octobers when we get there. I, I just have a feeling when they if they if the Yankees and the Astros play the seven game series starting tomorrow, I'd bet on the Astros. So I think you're, the so Yankees you're, uh, right you're, you're done, like, you know, with the Yankees, in other words. You're just, they just don't get Not it said done I'm done you. with you're them. You're done. You won't, they you're done say with I was them. Done you don't believe them. in them anymore. Is I that, think is it's, that it? I think this start, I think the start is a little bit of, it's great. And they're going to make the playoffs. I got to see them win in the playoffs. You know, I've seen the same story the last few years. uh, Hold on, Mafia Santa, you you can come over to Queens. We can we got seats for you. I don't need to go over to Queens. I'm obviously I'm obviously rooting for them. I'm not getting hyped up and bought into this great record that they have. I need to see it in October. That's what I'm saying. You can get over to that to ballpark these... in like 15, 20 minutes from your house. You go right in there to. The I need to field, see. Right I want to see all these same guys, not do what they've done the last few years in October, which is when they face good pitching, they can't get score any runs, like they didn't last night. So that's what I want to see. I want to see that change in October, before I start to buy in and say this team's going to win the World Series. That's all. They're going to be there. They're going to get to face the Astros What's again. What's next? You're going to tell me Notre Dame should go to the SEC? What's next today? You got any other surprises nah, they, for me that you've turned on our bombers? Gonna, Anything else? I haven't turned on them. Haven't turned on them. We got to get to October. I don't, I'm not taking this big start and saying that they're winning the World Series. I'm not doing it. Notre Dame did Chapman's the SEC, coming back huh? off the aisle. They'll go to the Big Ten. Big Ten for Notre Dame. We're going to go to the Big Ten. Uh, we did say the Phillies beat the Braves 14-4 to last night. And why do we play the Nick Castellanos home run? Because it won us money. Here it is on NBC Sports Philadelphia. That one's hit well. Oh. To right center field. Duvall's going back to the scoreboard. It is gone! Three-run opposite field home run for Castellanos. It's his first one in the month of June. And it comes on the final day of the month. 7-1 Phillies. How about this bum? He hits his first home run of the entire <laughs> month on June 30th, and Carver High hits the bat. That's when you know you got the juice. Uh, I was on Aaron Nola and the Phillies in that game. I hit it. I mean, just so many bets last night. Honestly, I don't even. Yep. I don't even think I changed my underwear today. Mafia, can we check on that? No. Uh, Schwarber, the opposite. He had 12 homers in June, capped it off with a 420 foot shot. Schwarbaum? racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinci and cam stewart will get you ready for game time 
everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. You know, I really, really enjoy performing uh, in front of millions of people in T-Mobile Arena. Um, so I, I think it's just, I just go in there, flow, and just do what I know I'm capable of doing. It's honestly hard not to be confident. I try not to be confident. It's hard. I knock so many people out of my life. It's just like... It's really hard not to be confident. So I try to stay humble, but that's hard. Yeah. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. It's pretty rare for us to see a team with a good NFL running back, right? Antonio Gibson, pretty good. And not only do they have him, but they also extended J.D. McKissick's contract over the offseason as well. Um, you know, he was going to sign with the Buffalo Bills. And then said, I don't really get why they like Brian Robinson, but I think it's pretty clear that the team does like Brian Robinson. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. If you're trading for Kevin Durant now, you're getting Kevin Durant for a few years still on the back end of his prime. Incredible stuff to drop down yesterday. Shakes the core of the NBA because it seems like, Kevin, there's four, five, or six teams now, quite honestly, if he gets traded to, go right up to the top of the standings at the FanDuel Sportsbook as the favorites to win the NBA championship. Only on SportsGrid. Always uh, the best show when we get Dubsy Anderson on to mix it up, and especially on a pain-free Friday on the 4th of Pharrell holiday weekend. Let's bring him in, our golf, tennis, soccer, and pony insider and coolest dude on the network. Uh, there he is, Dubsy. Look at you, looking fresh with that shirt, like, Maybe we should send him down to the beach club to get a little leg. I mean, he's looking like he wants a, a rum runner and a little leg on a Friday. There what you up, go. Dubs? There you go. Pain free Friday, Scotty, with big dubsy. What a way to chop it up. Clean golf shoes, dirty bets to get your afternoon started right. And shout out to my boy, the Pharrell Ballers, getting another chip during the week. Scotty, I was looking for tickets on StubHub. I should have come to you directly, but hats off to you, my man. What a good time it is in sports. I know you would have been throwing some elbows there in the paint. I wouldn't have it any other way, Scotty. Great That's to right. see you. Next time we'll have you on the uh, bench as an ambassador for the Ballers. We'll let you sit on my the man. bench during a chip run. All right, so I, I want to start off uh, with, frankly, the jealousy factor of – uh, what I deem all these guys on the PGA tour that continue to rake the live guys uh, for leaving. And they just, it, it's been one after the next Rory, all of them slamming them and, and they just keep talking about them and they can't stop talking about them. And it, it just never ends. And to me, it's almost like it's, it's professional jealousy that they're over there making that much money and they wish they were, but they don't have the stones to do it. It really is amazing to me how none of them will shut up about it. 
Ah, uh, Scotty, d don't get me started. I mean, this has been a very frustrating couple of months for me. And, and look, who, who are the spokespeople for the PGA Tour? Roy McIlroy, JT, Scotty said, okay, these guys have got $50 million in career earnings. You know, for some of these other guys, they would absolutely entertain it if they had the opportunity. I mean, no one agrees with sports washing, but for me, Jay Monaghan, the, the PGA Tour commissioner, no good, no good from him the last couple of months. I mean, they have absolutely given this thing leagues when... They didn't have to. I mean, drawing a line in the sand. What if we didn't do that and say, okay, you can go and play them. You can come back. These golfers, yeah, they're going to go and get the bag. They all want to get paid. I mean, they're not bad guys, Scotty. Anyone who's offered $125 million, $200 million to play, what, eight times a year? Come on, you're going to entertain it. But if Jay Monahan didn't put that line in the sand, these guys would go and play in these exhibition-style events. If you're they're going to come back and play in the majors. They're going to play in the FedEx Cup playoffs. They're going to play in the Players' Championship. They're going to play in Ryder Cups, President's Cups. And now we're not going to have that. I mean, it is still golf, Scotty. We don't have enough excitement and great quality golfers to mix it with three tours. The DP World Tour. We've got the John Deere Classic, the Live Portland Classic, if you will. Come on. That's too much golf, Scotty. Sure, they can coexist, but they can't run side by side. And now we've lost, what, 40 of our best golfers here from the PGA Tour. Of course, I'm not happy with that. It waters down the product. Golf was already struggling. We're competing all year round against some of these mainstream sports for their eyeballs. And now we're going against ourselves? Come on. For me, Scotty, the PGA Tour, they haven't handled this one well. And how have they counteracted? Okay, we're going to uh, do exactly what Live Golf have done. We're going to have our own eight event mini series next year, $160 million, no cuts, smaller fields, $20 million. That's great, boys. Where, where'd this $160 million come from? You didn't have it two months ago. We couldn't have used that to sort of grow the game and stop these players jumping ship. Please, I can't entertain it, Scotty. Wild times in golf, to say the least, but it is what it is. Well, I, I got to tell you, like, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Uh, from the standpoint, though, of, of the sport itself, you're selling me that it's struggling, and I see... Uh, the growth of, of golf courses and of the equipment and of the cost of golfing. Uh, and when I go golfing, it's, you know, it's, it's three to a nickel every time I go out to, you know, gamble and to drink and to eat. And, and it's just an expensive sport. And I have never, ever seen it, uh, in my opinion, stronger. I mean, uh, the golf courses that I go to, you, you know, you're sitting there for five, six hours trying to play golf. There's so many people golfing. What do you mean when you tell me that golf is struggling? They're playing from, uh, it, it seems to me, 10 or 11 months a year from Hawaii until the grass is burned uh, in Atlanta at East Lake. I, I, all I'm saying is I don't see where this struggle is you're talking about. I, I, I'd say, Scotty, turn your eyes directly to the John Deere Classic this week on the PGA Tour. I mean, these names are absolute journeymen, to say the least. We don't have enough good golfers to go around and play multiple tours week in, week out. A week like this is the prime example of me. Golf as a sport is, is not struggling. The PGA Tour is not struggling financially, Scotty, and that's the point I make. Why haven't we reinvested back into the game? Why are our prize pools still at $12 million and Liv comes along and now they can offer up $20, $25 million? You think the broadcasts, is it bringing any money? No, please. The PGA Tour have been sitting on it for far too long, hoarding it, not giving back enough to these players. Now, a lot of people say these PGA Tour golfers, they're spoiled brats. They're making $20, $30 million a year. Yes, the, the, the top 20 in the world are, but, you know, 150th in the world, they're struggling to get by. They're, they're traveling week in, week out. They're playing mini tour events, if you will. We need the money back into the grassroots for these guys, and that would have kept a lot more big names if they didn't have that choice. And, and look, when Liv comes along, I know the PGA Tour, they don't want to sit down and meet with Greg Norman and say, look, we, we don't want to partner up. And I totally get that, but I'm sure they could have figured out a schedule where we say, okay, the Live can have the off weeks for the PGA Tour. We'll, we'll move the John Deere Classic, if you will, have free reign, and then we still find a way to keep the best of the best playing on the PGA Tour. Now, I think we're still going to have the best of the best, and the PGA Tour announced this week another strategic alliance with the DP World Tour. That's great. We now get the best young guys coming from Europe back out here to the PGA Tour. But what happens to the DP World Tour? I mean, that is going to be completely decimated. They lose all their best talent out here in the state. So that's my biggest concern with it, Scotty. Golf as a sport, it is pumping, son. It is thriving. Plenty of dollars being made. But for a lot of these golfers, 
they've been frustrated. The PGA Tour never listens to them. They don't want to grow the game. They don't want to change the tour schedule. I mean, look at it, Scotty. I mean, it's been the same product for the last five, ten years. They're scared to mix it up. Well, change, it's not always a good thing, but I think competition, it's definitely going to be a good thing. The only thing I'm concerned about, Scotty, I think the fans are going to struggle. The players are getting paid. They're getting the bag. But for us, the golf fanatics, the diehards, if you will, a week like this week, the John Deere Classic, I mean, gee, Scotty, this is a leaderboard which I'd argue is at, you know, corn free to a level. Well, it is terrible, but isn't that their own fault that they keep rolling out the John Deere every year? And <laughs> I remember back in the day, they had the 84 Lumber Classic. Like, it's their own fault that they have these half assed crap tournaments. And you wonder why uh, a guy like Brooks Kepka shows up just for the majors, for the big bag, because all those little tour stops where, gosh, you, you say it all the time on my show. When we put you on every week to preview these crappy tournaments where guys finish 25 under par, it's their own fault that they play on these crappy, easy golf courses. They should be made to suffer. They should be playing on the whistling straights. They should be playing on Kiowa. They should be playing on courses that eat them alive because that would make more people watch. No one gives a rat's ass about that candy ass John Deere tournament or that live <laughs> tournament in Portland. I want to watch heavies that's what i'm saying scotty the likes of pharrell and dubsy in in the in the golf department but that that's the point i'm trying to make scotty a week like this you know it is prime exam i mean the leaderboard that john did poston schwab got her up ct pan calentar i mean tommy two gloves gainey who got done for the old massage parlors you know a couple of months back there so come on i, I mean it's too much golf scotty the pga tour is a watered down product they should have changed it up a long time ago and i know they are absolutely sitting on that money. And I think their first counter reaction is to copy what Liv are doing. Nah, nah, come on. We could have done better than that, Jay Monaghan. All right, Wimbledon, what do you think of what's going on there? Um, I love tennis chicks. I, I want to sleep with several <laughs> of them. And I'm not really interested in watching guys play tennis except my boy, Rafa. Rafa, hey, hey, no comment uh, with those first sentiments, Scotty, but it is the greatest show on grass on the women's side you've got Iga Swiatek 37 wins in a row she is the dominant force a lot of people saying she lacks that grass court experience turn it up she's 21 years of age the dominant world number one she's won junior Wimbledon if you're looking for a bit of value on the women's side of the draw Scotty Coco Goff 18 years of age American recent finalist there at the French Open you can still find her at 12 to 1 on the men's side of the draw Rafa he's looked a little shaky here Scotty he's a two-time winner but chasing that calendar slam He's lost a couple of sets. His last couple of matches here, he has to find something. Of course, all roads lead to Novak Djokovic, the Joker. He's won the last three Wimbledons coming into this one. A six-time winner. He's had a bit of controversy, uh, controversy, if you will, this year, not being allowed to play the Aussie Open. He's banned from the US Open. The motivation's there. But again, if you're looking for value on the men's side of the draw, people are going to get crazy with me, Scotty. But the big servant, absolute crazy man, Nick Kyrgios, King Nick out on the court tomorrow, taking on City Pass. What do you need to do well on grass? Big serve, big diesel. Nick Kyrgios has that at 14-1. to 1. He's got a great track record against the likes of Nadal and Djokovic. The Wimbledon, that is by far the best show on grass we're seeing this week, Scotty. Hey, I got to tell you, I got 30 seconds, but uh, I can't believe that Kyrgios match isn't on center court. How stupid were they? Oh, look, it's ridiculous. He is the number one draw card at all these tennis events. It's the same as the golf fans, the tennis fans. Oh, he's not good for our sport. This is Wimbledon, please. That's the first ticket you're buying. If you're going to Wimbledon, Scotty, and imagine trying to play against him. He's spitting at fans. He's giving the lip service to the umpire, but he's playing at a very high clip, Scotty. Watch out for him. He is a danger. I think golfers should start spitting at fans and giving the cameraman the finger. Dubsy, great luck today. Love you. Have a great fourth of Pharrell. You too, Scotty. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
We'll see how it plays out. Buffalo Football going full right now. circle. All their chips Diamond in the middle of the table. How dare they do what's fiscally responsible? Sixers betting above are they a fraud the rim. Or are they not a fraud? Did you watch that game a couple of nights ago? Oh, Steph Curry was out there begging for his life. Someone come please help me. Fred Van Vliet give me the In business. game live the all access. You can take the money line. And they only had to go to San Jose too. It was small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Ben should Prime be really time. happy because his fraudulent conference got a couple extra teams in uh, instead of the pass. There but boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The Pat McAfee Show. He would be quite a baby face, oh, yeah. though, if he said, I wasn't expecting to tell you guys what Sue was uh, wanting to rule, but she said eight games is what they decided mm -hmm. on. That's cute, Sue. 17 games plus playoffs, Roger Goodell. Like I think he, he gets a big, I, he gets a big applaud. Oh, he, he he probably ends up on the 60 under 60 list or 70 under 70 <laughs> list. Thousand percent of like baby faces in the world yeah. if he does that. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. Do you think the win winner of Wimbledon on the men's side will be one of those two big guns? No, Benny, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna go towards the value play. I love that plus money, a plus two sixty. I think Ras really suits the upset play because you can lean on the power game where some of these guys lack, you know, the fitness to get around the hard court. They lack the experience on clay. I think on grass, uh, it's really well suited to the power game. And some of these young guys, they have that in spade. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. It looks like Jalen Brunson to the Knicks uh, will be a done deal. Sham Sharnia reporting now four years, $110 million. Good player, uh, without a doubt. Uh, he's not worth $110 million. I, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what basketball executives, I don't care what the Knicks say. They're, they're pathetic front office. I don't care what uh, media. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Early fireworks in NBA free agency. What did you expect out there? We tell you all the time. Sometimes the NBA offseason is just as fun as the NBA playoffs, championship round, and regular season. Why is that? How about the Atlanta Hawks trying to improve their game, getting the Jean Murray from the San Antonio Spurs for multiple first-round draft picks and Danilo Gallinari. We'll see over the next few years who won that trade, but right now. Only on Sports Grid. What's wrong with me that I like hot tennis chicks? Oh, yeah. go ahead then. Oh, we're on? Oh, uh, Carver, hi. I know we're going to keep going on baseball here. They're giving me the business on the outside in the truck. What is up with these people? Uh, what do you mean, these people? It, these people. Uh, I did see my girl, Carolina Pliskova. Uh, got eliminated yesterday. She got upset uh, out of women. It's unfortunate. It's sad to see uh, Carolina go home. Uh, let's go now to PNC last night where the Buckos, Scotty, raising the Jolly Roger once again. Uh, eight to seven, they beat the Brewers. Let's start with Michael Perez. Who? The Bucko catcher, Scotty. Again, the hat trick for a pirate hitter. The third time in the last 11 days. Three dingers for Perez. His third of the night on AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. And hits oh. a drive to right. Michael Perez clears the deck. A three-homer game. It is the Lumber Company. Another three-homer game. This time, it's Michael Perez. I mean, can you even believe that the backup catcher hits three home runs in a game? That was the night of his life. I mean, three times in the last 11 days, the Pirates have had a guy hit three homers in a game. Sawinski did it. You. Brian Reynolds did it the other day You're against the, the Nats. And then Perez last night. Um, 
That's the first time that's ever happened in Major League Baseball history. The same team three times in 11 days uh, having a guy hitting three homers in the game. So, uh, But I'm not done. It was such a big night at PNC, and I had to give you two pirate highlights because whenever our boy O'Neill Cruz goes yard, we are there. Again on AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. It hits this hard oh. to right center field. O'Neill Cruz, look at this ball go. Oh, another Cruz missile clearing the deck into the clearing landing. The deck. Another line drive, and it's two to nothing. His second. It's no doubter, isn't he? He hit his first no doubter on Monday in Nationals Park. I love O'Neill Cruz. I mean, honestly, I'm a huge you fan already, to. and he's been around for two weeks. Already the betting favorite to win the National League Rookie of the Year, uh, O'Neill Cruz, and he's only been around for two weeks. Uh, how about that? Uh, last on. night, the Jays beat the Rays 4 1. In fact, right now, Scotty. Uh, Toronto leads Tampa 5-1. Of course, that is the Canada Day afternoon spectacular Woo! up at the Sky Dome. 5-1 Jays right now in the top of the fourth. Last night, once again, uh, even though we've been hitting a lot of these uh, home run props on the Lions share, Scotty, we've also been just missing guys by a day or two. Teoscar Hernandez last night on Sportsnet. <laughs> uh. First pitch, oh. blast. Deep left. Oscar Hernandez muscles up for two, and the Blue Jays strike first. God, I hit that game last night, too. What didn't I hit? Uh, Cubs beat the Reds 15-7. to uh, I'm going to pass uh, on Patrick Wisdom today, Scotty, because, frankly, I thought the call sucked. Uh, and the Cubs are now tied 5-5 uh, with the Red Sox. That is your afternoon business and special, bottom of the fifth, out at Wrigley. Wisdom had two homers last night, by the way. Uh, hit the they over, too. On the Reds. Hit the over. Sure did. Mariners beat the A's 8-4 to four last night. Uh, tied at four that late uh, in, the, in the sixth inning. Here's Cal Raleigh. The two-run triple. He'd actually come around to score on an error as well on Root Sports. Six for 17. He's got two RBI tonight. Center field. Pretty well hit. Bolt going back with that run. Is Santana scoring his Toro? Cal digging for third. He's in there. He's going to try to score, and he will. Cal Raleigh, lightning up here at T-Mobile Park. Yeah, I, you know, it's it, six of the eight games I hit, and, and six of the eight totals I hit. It, it's embarrassing. It really is. I. They shouldn't even let me get near, uh, like, the grill this weekend. I mean, I might catch on fire. <laughs> uh, every week I like to give you the update on the awards. Uh, American League MVP as we head into the fourth of Pharrell weekend. Aaron Judge, minus 125, is the favorite. Uh, there is Shohei Otani, 270 right behind him, and then Trout. Uh, Jordan Alvarez now hurt. Uh, it's Judge and Otani, Scotty. Uh, provided none of them get hurt. That's the race right there. Judge and Otani. I mean, it's just, it gets to the point where I have to like admit that this guy Otani, when he hits all these home runs, that's one thing. But when he goes out and strikes out 13 and 11 every time he pitches, uh, I just think he's more valuable than Judge. Uh, National League side, Paul Goldschmidt uh, has extended uh, his betting lead, you could say, plus 115 now. Uh, Peter Alonzo, Manny Machado, who returned last night for the Padres, Mookie Betts, Trey Turner, et cetera, et cetera. I still think there's a long way to go in this one. Somebody will emerge after the All-Star break. Yeah, they got a lot of work to do to catch uh, Goldie on ice. I mean, honestly, your boy Goldschmidt is tearing it up. He's got a massive lead. He's got a lap lead. He, they got a, they're a lap down at Indy. Uh, American League Cy Young, Shane McClanahan, Dirty, Dirty Harry, Harry McClanahan at the top, along with Justin Verlander. Uh, you can give me Verlander out of those two right now. Alec Manoa, Garrett Cole, Otani. Why don't we give Otani the Cy Young and the MVP? Let's give them both of them. Give him well, everything. First of all, uh, 
Dirty Harry, every time he pitches against the Yankees, he loses. He's been and Verlander yes, beats the true. Yankees. So Verlander, not only that, bonus points for sleeping with Kate Upton. He is the always clear leader for the point. Cy Young. Yes. Uh, he always gets bonus points uh, in that aspect, at least from us. And in the National League, Sandy Alcantara uh, coming off of the complete game win against the Cardinals the other night. Uh, has now got himself to plus 180. Corbin Burns, Joe Musgrove, Max Fried, Zach Wheeler, Rodon, etc. cetera, uh, further down the line. Look, Gonsolin made the board this week, Scotty. Gonsolin finally up there. I mean, he's 8-0 for Christ's sakes. You'd think they'd finally catch on to that, and Anderson as well. But uh, right now, it's Alcantara's. But honestly, if Musgrove uh, could ever get to the point where, like, imagine what he was, 8-1, Imagine if he was uh, 16 and two. Imagine if he was, you know, 23 and four. Then I'm going to bet on yeah. uh, Musgrove. If he keeps, you know, winning, which he didn't, right? He lost again. So uh, I think that he's still got a shot. I, you know, I think we're getting a little too ahead of ourselves with uh, two complete games. Uh, wins the Cy Young. Let's slow down with that. Yeah, I, I think there's a long way to go in that one as well. Uh, before we determine who's going to be the NL Cy Young. All right, let's get to tonight uh, in Major League Baseball. Plenty of games for you, Scotty. It starts at 6 p.m. Eastern in D.C. Between the Marlins and the Nationals, Rodgers and Gray tonight is your starting matchup. The Nationals, the home favorite, minus 132. This total down to nine from nine and a half earlier. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Gray and the Nationals here, and I think it's going to go uh, over in D.C. because Rodgers gives up six runs a game on average, and Gray gives up around four runs a game. But I like uh, Gray's uh, record and what he's done when he's pitched. He's been, frankly, their best pitcher, without a doubt, on a crappy team. I'll take the Nats tonight and Gray and the over. Uh, the Cardinals will be spending the weekend in Philadelphia with the Phillies, Scotty, and they've got Mikolas on the mound tonight uh, going against the Phillies. Minus 142 road favorites for the Redbirds, this total at 9.5. I like the under and the Cardinals. I like Mikolas to win in Philly over your boy who will, in, in the game, no doubt, falter. Yes, your boy Falter. Uh, spe <laughs> Speaking of faltering, uh, it doesn't matter. PGA Tour or the Live Tour, when Bryson misses a tee shot, Scotty, he misses a tee shot. I mean, he just took like a whole bunch of people out on the right side of the fairway. <laughs> your boy Good. Bryson duck hooking one to the right, uh, teeing off at the pumpkin patch here, but here in Portland. Uh, Braves and the Reds in Cincinnati tonight. Max Freed against Minor. Braves, the heavy lumber road favorite, minus 250, uh, 275, excuse me, total at nine and a half. I think Max Fried should be in the conversation as well for Cy Young. He's going for his eighth win tonight with a 270 ERA. Uh, Miner gets lit up when he pitches. Uh, I like Fried to win, and I like the over. I think the Braves are going to score 10 runs tonight. Let's go. Light them up, baby. Uh, the Brewers and the Pirates, again, at PNC. They will look to raise the Jolly Roger once again with the kid Contreras on the mound. But Corbin Burns uh, will be going for the Brewers, reigning NL Cy Young Award winner. Brewers minus 205, total of 7.5. You know, I love the under in the first five innings. I love the under in the game. I think Contreras is going to outpitch Burns tonight and have the best start of his young career for the Bucs. I like the Pirates and under first five, under oh, in game. Oh, the Buccos tonight. They've been playing some good ball here. They got the Yankees coming to town. When we come back on Tuesday, Scotty, oh. Pirates and the Yankees at PNC oh. on Tuesday oh. night. Get ready. Uh, the Royals and the Tigers are in Detroit tonight. Uh, Keller is going for the Royals. And the always elusive, to be determined, uh, pitching for the Tigers. <laughs> minus 110 for Detroit. Minus 106 for Kansas City. Total of now up to 8.5. Your boy, uh, Michael Pineda going, uh, the former Yankee who never did anything. I'll take him, though, over Helen Keller. She's given up nine runs a game. 
Uh, I think the Tigers finally hit some boppers tonight against Helen, and they win and cover over. The Yankees are in Cleveland to open a series with the Guardians. We said earlier Garrett Cole is going. Savali going for the Guardians. Yankees minus 230. This total is down to eight. I like the Yankees in the over. I think they're going to tee off on Savelli, and that's that. And uh, Cole's going to get an easy win tonight. I'm all over the Bombers. And I used to go uh, with the Pharrellavidians to Cleveland to see the Yankees play uh, a four-game set. And uh, let's just say we were slightly inebriated at the games. And... One other note, we did go with TR, my dad, to the Rock and Roll Hall Ooh. of Fame and eat mushrooms. Wow. Are we on the air? Whoa. Are, are we, no. Whoa. And of course, that Don't was talk when about was, hallucinogenics uh, on no, no tripping. No, on no, mafia. no, no, no. Of course, that was when it was the Jake, uh, the old days, Jacob's Field. Uh, there in Cleveland before they changed the name 600 times. Uh, last one, we'll do the rest later. The Rangers and the Mets at City Field tonight. Peterson is in for the Basset Hound. C. Otto going for Texas. Uh, minus 188 for the Mets. Total of nine now. You know, uh, this one's going to be ugly too. I like the Mets and the over. They're going to absolutely mm. blast Otto back to Germany. be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice if you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in a know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks puck sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It's better to be in your skate than it is your sneakers because you don't, your, your foot's going like this, right? It's, it, it immobilizes your foot in your boot. It's a cast. Like, oh, this dude's good to go. When we're watching the warm ups, trying to get a feel. This guy's flying around like nothing. I mean, he's, he's for sure. I, I've been told there's like at least five or six guys that have broken feet. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's like, it's nuts, man. They're blocking shots. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. DeJounte Murray of San Antonio, an all-star for the Spurs this past season, who averaged 21-9-8, and eight, is now on his way to Atlanta. You're looking at other guys who you're going to have to extend. Okongu is coming up down the line at some point. DeAndre Hunter, they have to figure out his contract situation very soon, uh, whether he's going to get an extension. And you have DeJounte Murray now, and part of why he's on the move is because... The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. And MJ Melendez is 4,500. Lord Gasparri Jr. 3,200. I do really like the Blue Jays tonight. I think that they're going to be a little bit off the board. You know, I would not expect very many of their players to be over 10% owned. And uh, Griel has been demoted. He actually had a streak last week where he had a double in four games straight. So he's kind of just figuring it out there at the plate a little bit. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Do you know anything at all about Deshaun Watson's hearings uh, that he had with the NFL? Is there any word leaking into Cleveland about what the prison sentence is going to be like? We're all up in the air. You know, you hear six to eight games this week, and that's coming off of last week where we heard indefinite suspension. So I, I don't really know where we're going with this thing. I know that former federal judge Sue Robinson is going to have this thing in her hand. The Sports Grid Network.
It's time for another exciting edition of Today in Carver High History. All right, 1951. Bob Feller throws his third career no-hitter against the Tigers. 68. Bob Gibson streak. 47 and two-thirds scoreless innings ends while a wild pitch leads to a run against the Dodgers. 74 NFL players go on strike for 41 days challenging the Roselle rule but had to wait until 77 for a new CBA. 82, Cal Ripken plays the first of his record 2,216 consecutive starts for the O's. 1987, WFAN in New York begins broadcasting as the first 24-hour all-sports radio station 35 years ago today. 1990, Andy Hawkins of the Yankees throws a no-hitter but still loses 4-0. What? What? In the bottom of the eighth, three errors, two walks, give the White Sox all the runs. A young 10-year-old Carver High remembers watching this, Scotty. Here it is. And a little pop-up, Espinosa, makes the catch. Hey, I don't believe it. It's a no-hitter, but four big runs. That's crazy. When you lose, it's not a no-hitter. I'm sorry. I don't care if you didn't give up any hits. You lost. Uh, you lose. 95, all NBA business besides the draft is suspended till a new CBA is made. 96, the Winnipeg Jets moved to Arizona. What a move that's been. 1987, Mike Tyson indefinitely suspended by Nevada State Athletic Commission. That's because he bit Holyfield's ear off a couple times. <laughs> they took his $20 million too. 98, NBA commences a lockout, which lasts 204 days. 2011, NBA owners, another lock. How many lockouts do you guys have on this day? Jeez, 2012, <laughs> Tiger Woods wins the Congressional. Spain beat Italy 4-0 to win the Euro in 12. LeBron, four years, 154 with the Lakers on this day in 2018. Tyler Skaggs found dead in his hotel in 2019. 2021, NFL finds the football team $10 million for that rampant culture of sexual harassment. They're still real. Rampant.